हेलो एवरीबडी दिस इज डॉक्टर रजनी शर्मा एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इंग्लिश आई डिलीवर दिस लेक्चर फॉर ज्ञान दूत टू पॉइंट जीरो एंड इनिशिएटिव टेकन बाय कमिश्नरेट कॉलेज एजुकेशन जयपुर टू इनेबल द स्टूडेंट्स टू कैरी ऑन देयर स्टडीज ड्यूरिंग पैंडेमिक माई टॉपिक टूडे इज नेचर पोएम बर्च इज रिटर्न बाय रॉबर्ट फ्रोस्ट एंड माई ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू इनेबल द स्टूडेंट्स टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस पोएम First we shall have an introduction to the poet Robert Lee Frost was Frost was for, born on March 26 1874 in San Francisco his father was a journalist and his mother wrote scottish poems he took courses of english philosophy and classics from harvard university he had to sell the legacy of a farm from his grandfather to get a publisher for his poems in this way he was facing crisis economically and he had to survive to sell his property he got recognition in england praised by ezra pound for the poem north of boston he won a number of honors including award from national institute of arts and letters Robert Frost was famous for his novel use of vocabulary and phrases of language which he uh, calls freshness of a stranger. He was famous for his technique of using the ordinary to suggest something other than itself. He inherits from Bible classics poetry of Wordsworth, Thoreau and Emerson. He was a master in use of verse forms like rhymed couplets, sonnet, blank verse and rhyming quatrains the famous works of robert frost are some are great volumes and some are very small poems which got him recognition among them are the gift outright a boy's will north of boston stopping by woods on a snowy evening birches the mending wall the road not taken nothing gold can stay among his famous works there are some very short poems which became very famous now we come to the theme of the poem the poem was first published in the mountain of interval in 1916 it is one among most quoted nature lyrics of robert frost there is a fine blend of fact and fancy observation and imagination the poet sees birches bending to left and right across the line of darker straighter trees he imagines that some boy has been swinging them then he guesses it to be the effect of ice storms frost prefers to imagine that some boy must have been bent them one by one he left no tree unconquered and unbent in a reminiscent mood the poet remembers his own childhood when he himself was a bircher a singer of birches in uh, an escapist mood the poet again wants to swing and leave the earth for a while when weary of considerations he will prefer coming back as uh, earth is the right place for love now we are going to attempt the text of the poem we shall explain one by one all the stanza of the poem the poem starts like this when i see birches bend to left and right across the lines of straighter darker trees i like to think some boys been swinging them but swinging doesn't bend them down to stay as ice storms do often you must have seen them loaded with ice a sunny winter morning after a rain they click upon themselves as the breeze rises and turn many colored as the stir cracks and crazes their enamel the poet starts the poem in a colloquial way that is conversational style he says that the spectacle of birches bent some on the right uh, left some on the right 
uh, 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 across the line of straight and dark trees. Then he imagines that it is the work of a boy. The boy must have bent them, but he again uh, refutes his uh, uh, argument. He says that swinging doesn't bend them. A boy who is swinging them, the load of the boy can't bend them permanently. He prefers to think a uh, scientific fact that it is the work of ice storms because boy must have uh, bent them uh, for a short while but uh, permanently they can't bend. This is the work of ice storms because ice is deposited on them permanently and in this way after being loaded with ice for a long time they are bent forever. Often you must have seen them loaded with ice a sunny winter morning. On a winter morning when you the sunlight is there you see them after rain that spectacle is very common and natural in uh, the, uh, the play the, the uh, countries which are uh, in the uh, uh, side right of in the line of Antarctica they click upon themselves as the breeze rises and turn many colored as the stir cracks and crazes their enamel. Very scientific fact is there and the natural phenomena is also there. Uh, this is the, uh, we can say, uh, practical thing which Frost must have faced every day in his childhood. He says that they are clicking upon themselves because they are covered with a layer of ice uh, it uh, uh, makes them click because ice is clicking it is making a clicking sound when the branches are striking against each other colliding with each other when the breeze blows and turn many colored and uh, they are uh, many colored because uh, sunlight is falling on them so reflection of colors is also there and the star is cracking and crazing their enamel their enamel the coating on them, coating of ice which works as an enamel, very shiny layer is there. So they are, the branches of the trees are cracking and crazing. Their uh, upper layer, the layer of uh, snow upon them which is deposited upon them, it is cracking and clicking. Soon the sun's warmth makes them shed crystal cells and soon when cracks are uh, on the layer of the uh, st uh, ice and it is also turning many colored when sunlight is falling on them then what happens they are also shed from the trees the uh, deposited layer of ice is falling on earth because it is melting when sun is uh, shedding its rage shattering and avalanching on the snow crust they are in the form of heaps because a great spectacle is there and one by one when trees are shedding their uh, enamel of snow then what happens there are heaps of the spectacle is presenting heaps of uh, ice everywhere and they are avalanching in the form of an avalanche a huge mass of snow which is uh, presenting because everywhere there are heaps of snow heaps of ice and they it seems as if uh, all the the dome of uh, heaven has fallen as if the sky has been cracked into pieces and it is uh, presenting such a great spectacle they are dragged to the withered bracken by the load and the load of ice one by one when the layer after layer are deposited on each other, when there are heaps of ice, then what happens? They are dragging because uh, they are melting simultaneously. So they are dragged to the corner where Brecon is there. Brecon is a fern abundant on heath and they seem not to break. This ice which is uh, in the form of a huge mass, it can never be broken. 
but it is uh, proceeding forward it is moving forward like an avalanche which is a very common sight on mountains though once they are bored so low for long and once they are bored they never straighten themselves that is for a uh, that is uh, forever and it is for a long time they never write themselves they don't get opportunity write, to write themselves because for months when they are in the same position the flexibility uh, is there and the hardness of them is taken out you may see their trunks arcing in the woods years afterwards after years also they are in arc forms uh, for example uh, they are bent in the, just as arc is there trailing their leaves on the ground like girls on hands and knees that throw their hair here frost is presenting a simile he is comparing the bent birches to the girls who are drying their hair in sunlight the same position is there they are bent like girls they are leaves which are touching the ground they can be compared to the, the hair of girls ain't the slimness the flexibility the uh, delicacy is the same like girls before them over their heads to dry in the sun so they are throwing their hair before them to dry in the sunlight a very beautiful simile has been presented by frost but i was going to say when truth broke in with all her matter of fact about the ice storms he says i was presenting some other view before i could go forward the truth was out here truth is also personified truth was bringing all the matter of fact i should prefer to have some boy bend them he says i was uh, speculating something else when truth was out that it is the work of ice storm but the fact is that this is the work of ice storm but frost he is in a reminiscent mood he doesn't want to uh, digest the reality he wants to think that it is the work of a boy he prefers to have some boy bend them he says that i prefer to think that it is the work of a boy as he went out and in to fetch the cows he was a cowherd he went into the forest to bring his cows which might have been grazing throughout the day some boy too far from the town to learn baseball here the poem is totally pastoral uh, because the poet is presenting a countryside boy who is very far away from city and he is creating a game for himself because he is very far from town he can't go to learn uh, town games like uh, baseball so he is creating a game for himself the game of climbing up and climbing down the birches whose only play was what he found himself by the time the cow uh, cows were grazing in the field he was busy in some uh, work in some play and that play was conquering all the trees one by one his play was summer or winter whatever season it was he was playing alone no mate was there so he made he made these birches as his playmates one by one he subdued his father's trees by riding them down over and over again so this boy he uh, was grazing the cows in the field of his father he subdued he conquered all the trees conquered in the sense that he climbed upon them he felt triumphant here child psychology is there he is feeling triumphant he is feeling victorious when he is uh, climbing up these trees by riding them down over and over again and he is having such a sense of victory that he is climbing again and again to feel triumphant until he took the stiffness out of them at last what happened he took all the stiffness out of them the rigidness of the trees was taken away and they became flexible and they were bent forever not one but hung limp all the trees became limp not one was left for him to conquer in this way he bent all the trees one by one no tree was remaining straight 
he learned all there was to learn about not to launch uh, uh, not launching out too soon and so not carrying the tree away clear to the ground he always kept his poise to the top branches climbing carefully with the same pains you used to fill a cup up to the brim and even above the brim here frost is presenting a very beautiful metaphor the boy is feeling himself like a king here we are reminded of fern hill by dylan thomas here there he also feels like a king when he is lording wagon by uh, after wagon the uh, loads of uh, apples so he feels like a prince the same is here he is feeling triumphant like a king who is victorious on a army an army of the trees he learned all there was to learn he also got skill in the art of climbing the trees climbing and jumping so that he should not get hurt he learned not to launch out too soon because when uh, after climbing half the tree you are jumping then you can't get that much skill and uh, the tree is also not bringing to the ground uh, so you may get hurt because you may and when you are going to the top of the tree then climbing the, uh, then jumping then what happens the tree is touching the ground and the child is not hurt so he learned the skill of not jumping very soon and not carrying the tree away clear to the ground and not to make the tree uh, uh, the top of the tree to the ground because if it's touching the ground then also no joy is there because no jumping would be possible if the top of the tree is touching the ground so he always kept the poise but in this game it was not very easy game you have to get the skill when to jump at what point to ride and at what point to climb and to keep balance also to the top branches because when you are climbing the top branches then you have to be very careful lest you should fall so climbing carefully with the same pains you used to feel here also a simile is there the simile is uh, the uh, person who is filling a cup up to the brim then he is very careful of not spoiling even a drop or not spoiling the liquid here we are reminded of kids poem or to gracian urn here because there also four uh, personifications are there uh, and uh, the gleaner the uh, person who is uh, just having juice uh, by the sidar press the same is here one is very cautious because when the gleaner is uh, after uh, uh, just uh, loading a sheath overhead is walking very carefully when crossing the brook the same is here the child has to be very careful when going to the two branches and that work is compared to the work of filling a cup up to the brim so because a uh, little, little negligence or uh, carelessness can spoil the game so even above the brim sometimes you are filling the cup above the brim then the he flung outward after going to the top of the tree he is flinging himself outward first feet with a swish sound here man onomatopoeia is there swish sure that sarsarahat with a uh, because feet should come first then only you are able to jump if head is there then no jumping is there and the uh, injury uh, may occur so Uh, with a swish kicking his way down through the air to the ground then from air he was jumping when the top of the tree was about to touch the ground before that position he is jumping with a swish sound so i was once myself a swinger of perches now autobiographical note is there the poet is remembering his own childhood days he was a swinger of perches that's why he knows all the skills of the game and so i dream going back to be and he wants to be a swinger of perches again because those childhood games which are out he wants to play them again he is uh, fed up he wants to um, leave this world like kids to leave the world unseen 
here also in Aut to Nightingale Keats is uh, calling Nightingale he says that I want to accompany you here the Nightingale of Frost is the birch tree he wants to leave this world so uh, though uh, unseen uh, is not presented but the same feeling is there I would dream going back to be it is when I am weary of considerations and this happens when he is weary of problems of life and life is too much like a pathless wood life is presenting crisis some critical moments are there in life when you lose the path you do not know no destination is there no outlet is there you don't know how to come out of the situation at that time he wants to go to the lap of nature a message is there to the modern uh, generation that going back to the uh, lap of nature is the only solution of the problems of life if you are going away from nature then you are inviting problems for yourself so life is like a pathless wood where your face is burning and tickling with macaw webs here symbols are there life like a pathless wood when problems of life are there and cobwebs are also the problems of life so uh, the words uh, pathless wood cobwebs uh, eye weeping twig all these are symbols in the poem so the poet says sometimes what happens you are crossing the wood where no path is taking you out of the wood and your face is burning and tickling everywhere there are cobwebs problems are surrounding you and your eyes are shedding tears because shedding water because eyes are hurt the tricks are lashing across them and at that position at that time you want to leave this world and after leaving the world you uh, want to accompany the birches and to you want to go to the because after climbing the birches you leave the ground no relation is that but again coming back is there the same is the poet explaining in the coming stanza he says i would like to get away from earth a while he says that this is only for a, a temporary um, condition um, situation for a uh, very short while so in the previous stanza escapism was there escapism of kids was there he wants to escape from the problems of life but again he is coming to the reality that escapism was for a short while he wants to uh, face the situations of life only to uh, uh, refresh himself only to uh, be rejuvenated he wants to leave the earth in the company of birches but he wants to come back i would like to get away from earth only for a while and then come back to it begin over after being rejuvenated in the company of uh, uh, in the lap of nature he after getting energy from nature he wants to come back and face the problems again may no fate willfully under misunderstand me gods must uh, not misunderstand me and half grant what i wish and snatch me away we, we read in uh, uh, ancient uh, uh, anthologies that uh, gods granted half the prayer and half the wish was um, uh, evaporated for example uh, the rape of the lok he uh, desired he uh, prayed to get the loks and uh, he prayed to keep them forever so the gods listened and they granted half the prayer uh, prayer to get give the lok and half of the prayer was vanished in the air the same doesn't want to the uh, poet doesn't want to happen it that uh, i want to get away from earth half of the prayer is granted and coming back is not listened by gods that should not happen it should not happen that he should not return i wish no gods should no um, fate should uh, misunderstand him and grant him to leave the earth and to return is not granted that should never happen because earth is the right place for love very beautiful lines are there which have become uh, very famous quotes also earth is the only place where love is to be found i don't know where it is likely to go better no better place can be found for love i would like to go by climbing a birch tree he wants to go away from the earth 
by climbing the trees and climb back branches up a snow white trunk the beautiful trunk which is covered with snow and which has become white towards heaven he wants to go towards sky towards heaven it will be heavenly the very symbolic lines are there uh, uh, climbing the trees is heaven like and the trees when the tree is no more be able because when the we are going upward and upward what happens the top of the tree is not as strong as the uh, bottom part is there it is very strong so after going to the top the uh, tree is not able to bear the load and it is bending so uh, when the tree is not able to um, bear to tolerate the weight the load of the child and dip its top and it is dipping its top and sent me down again and the tree itself is giving a message that you should go down, back to the earth that would be good both going and coming back so in the company of purchase she will be fulfilling both the desires to leave the earth for a short time then again coming back because automatically nature is giving that lesson it is taking the point away but after before reaching the top it is again bending and leaving the like a lift it is uh, uh, lifting the point and then again uh, uh, sending him back to earth one would be worse than be a swinger of purchase if one has not swing, uh, swung the uh, trees, birches, then one has not done anything on earth. His uh, birth is based only, useless only. So in this way, we see uh, the poem is very beautiful. The poet is very beautifully explaining all the points. Now we shall discuss very, very short the chief characteristics of the poem. It is a great nature poem. I have already explained to you that the poem is nature poem because uh, it is pastoral poem and the poet is presenting a, a rural uh, scenery where uh, everywhere there are trees and children are frequently swinging the trees. Simplicity is there in matter and manner. The poet is presenting his argument. Language is very beautiful and very simple, easily understood. No uh, explanation is uh, required. A perfect blend of fact and fancy. The poet is presenting scientific facts also. How the earth, uh, the um, trees are covered with snow and how after sunlight they are melting and they are getting in heaps. That is a very common sight in European countries. And the facts and fancies also there. The poet is presenting uh, some imagery, some symbols. Uh, um, the climbing is presenting, the skill is presenting to the skill of uh, filling the cups uh, and all that. So there are both the things observation as well as imagination. Observation, whatever poet had observed uh, during his childhood, that is he is presenting, but he is making a blend, blending it with imagination also. Pastoralism is also there. Lyrical beauty is there. The poet is very simple and in sim simplicity there is musical quality. The poem contains some musical quality. It's a very beautiful lyric which can be sung. It is present, very great rhythmical quality is there. Again, philosophy of life is there. Uh, how life is full of uh, uh, worries, frustration and all that like kids. He is presenting that life is never a bed of roses. You have to face thrones also. And pessimistic in tone but ends with optimism. Though the poem is pessimistic, the poet is presenting worries, frustration, misfortunes of life, but he is full of presentation. He is an escapist mood. He wants to go away from earth, but he wants to come back. So optimism is there. He says that earth is the only place for love. And reality, the poem is full of realism. Reality of life is presented by the poet. How often we full of uh, worries and tensions. We want to quit, but that is not the solution. One has to face the problems bravely and get solution for himself rather than quitting. Escapism, I have already explained how the poet wants to escape the worries of life. For a short while, this escapism, the feeling of escapism is for he only temporary and he again wants to come back. 
ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल इंटर्ट अ पोएम इज स्टार्टिंग इन फर्स्ट पर्सन एंड इट इज एंडिंग विद फर्स्ट पर्सन ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल इंटोन ही इज प्रजेंटिंग वट एवर ही हैड सीन ड्यूरिंग हिज चाइल्डहुड डेज ए द पोएट द होल ऑफ द पोएम इज इन रेमिनेसेंट मूड ही नोज दैट बैंडिंग ऑफ द ट्रीज इज बिकॉज ऑफ आई स्टोम बट ही प्रीफर्स टू थिंक दैट इट इज द वर्क ऑफ अ बॉय वट एवर ही हैड डन ड्यूरिंग हिज चाइल्डहुड डेज एंड द पोएम इज यूनिवर्सल इन टोन and use of simile metaphor and symbolism is there in abundance the poet is presenting figures of speech literary terms and and these are studying the poem with beauty again my uh, onomatopoeia is also there um, metaphor simile all these make the uh, poem very beautiful and uh, uh, are giving uh, the uh, making the message of the poet very clear and symbolic thanks a lot for being with me